In this video, we're going to talk about internet performance and latency, which maybe is something you haven't really thought that much about, but I'm sure you've thought about internet performance. Almost everybody thinks that the speed of an internet connection is its bandwidth. You often hear people say, yes, I've got a really fast internet connection, it's 50 megabits a second, or I've upgraded to a faster internet connection, I've gone from 50 to 100 megabits a second. However, and this is something you really have to know, the bandwidth of an internet connection is not its speed. The bandwidth of an internet connection is its capacity. Here's an example just to illustrate that. If you had a train and a car going along at 60 miles an hour, they're both going the same speed, 60 miles an hour, but the train can carry an awful lot more people than a car. The capacity of the train and the capacity of the car, that's the equivalent of the bandwidth. The speed at which it goes along, that's the latency. So you might ask, and it's a valid question, how come we only ever talk about bandwidth? Generally, it's because the technology industry as a whole is guilty of using that incorrect label because it's easy to, for people to refer to and understand. But bandwidth is not speed, it's capacity. It's also true that internet service providers or some internet service providers will find it much easier to upgrade your bandwidth and more profitable to upgrade your bandwidth rather than fixing the real problem if you have an internet performance issue. You might say, um, and I'm sure you will, that you know if you have more bandwidth, you can download things in a shorter time. That's absolutely true. But most people, when they use the internet, aren't downloading things. They may be streaming, and that's a different subject. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, most people do interactive things on the internet. Um, if you take a typical workload, people might be using a chat program like Slack. They might be using uh, Facebook or any social media site. They may be uh, playing some kind of interactive game. They may be doing email. They may be doing schoolwork. There's all sorts of things they'll be doing, but they don't involve much in the way of downloads. So uh, the takeaway from this is that uh, bandwidth is not speed. Also, the, uh, you've got to say that adding more bandwidth will never improve the speed of your connection unless you're doing very, very large downloads all the time, and that really is not most people. So the speed really is referred to uh, in terms of latency. Latency is a delay. It's the amount of time that an internet signal takes to get from where you are to where it's going and back again. So think of that as um, going to a website clicking on a link with your mouse, the amount of time between you doing that mouse click and you getting a response on your screen, that's the latency. It's the round trip. We normally talk about that in milliseconds or one thousandth of a second. And it's important to remember that latency is bound by the laws of physics. Um, in particular, it's bound by the speed of light. So uh, let's, let's just say you're in New York and you send a request to a server in Los Angeles. That's about 4,500 kilometers, about 2,800 miles as the crow flies. And at the speed of light, that's a 15 millisecond or 15 thousandth of a second round trip. However, fiber optic cable is not completely efficient. It's only 66% efficient. So the theoretical minimum latency is 25 milliseconds. So the greater the distance, the longer the latency. If we were talking about, let's say, Mumbai to New York, that would be a longer time in milliseconds. In the real world, of course, there's, there's obstacles and fiber doesn't go as the crow flies and there's routers and switches in the path. So it actually uh, is, is longer than 25 milliseconds for New York to LA. In the real world, it comes out to 72 milliseconds. I just ran a test to, to prove that. Important to understand, for most people, let's just say you've got a 20 megabit connection, you will see no difference in internet performance, perceived speed, if you upgrade to 50, 100, 200 or beyond megabits a second. That's the capacity. But if you improve people's latency, they will have a much better user experience and they will really see an improvement in internet performance. You can have all the bandwidth in the world. If your latency is high, you're going to see poor performance for most applications. Streaming is an interesting subject. I said we come back to it. Because of the way streaming works, it has to 
send messages for every few frames on the screen and get a response to those messages. So latency impacts the time it takes to send those messages and get the responses to those messages. It's not a constant stream of pictures just coming at your computer. You might think that for the, the name implies that it is a stream, but the reality is you get a few seconds, then you get a message going back and forth to say, did you get that few seconds? Yes, I did. Okay, send me the next one. Um, and so you've got this constant messaging going on between you and the server you're streaming from. And if you have high latency, that's really going to affect how jerky or how consistent that video experience is. And we've got some clips here to see, you know, actually what latency does to, uh, to, those, to that kind of situation. And we've got some summary about what happens to the video, um, depending on what the latency is, even though you've got pretty much unlimited bandwidth. It's very true that you probably don't use much bandwidth and you uh, you probably use an awful lot less than you think you do. Uh, if you're streaming, let's say, a 1080p high def Netflix stream, it's probably less than five megabits a second. Almost everything you do is going to be less than that. Some people are streaming 4K, which is more, but very, very few. So what does all this mean? Back to our previous takeaway. More bandwidth does not mean better speed. You can't fix an internet performance problem, in most cases, by adding bandwidth. That's not the solution, despite what your internet provider might be telling you. High latency will make the internet appear slow. Even if you have plenty of bandwidth, if you've got poor latency, you're going to have a bad experience. Your residents will have a bad experience. Final conclusion, you don't use as much bandwidth as you think you might. So the secret to having a great user experience in any internet connection, but particularly in student housing, is to make sure the latency is as low as you can make it. How do you do that? That's what we do. So please feel free to call the number on the screen, 888-288-2587, and we'd be really happy to talk to you about how you can solve latency problems in your student housing network. Thank you.